فؤادك الايام فتا ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد ان شاء الله تعالى today باذن الله الكريم we're going to start um, an explanation on the book al-baykuniyah written by al-shaykh tahir ibn muhammad ibn futuh al-baykuni rahimahullah this book al-baykuniyah deals with ilm al-hadith the science of hadith and as you're all aware of brothers and sisters ilm al-hadith is from min afdal al-qurubat ila rabb al-alamin ilm al-hadith is from the greatest things uh, in which a person can get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with. How is, it, how is that not the case? When it really is bayanu tariq rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ashraf al-anbiya'i wa sayyid al-mursaleen. How is not that not the case? When the science of hadith is to clarify, to bring to light the path of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the best of prophets and the master and the leaders of the messengers. Ilm al-Hadith has gone through different stages until it reached the book we have today, Al-Bayquniyah. It went through marahil. It went through atwar, different stages and different levels and different periods until it reached a point where the ulama organized it, they categorized it, they gave it headings and subheadings, it became well organized. It wasn't like that at the beginning of when this field was first put down. Many books were written, وَتَعَدَّدِ وَتَعَدَّدِتْ وَتَعَدَّدِتْ الْمُصَنَّفَاتِ The books that were written became too much in number. Anyone who wants to see more in details where they can find um, the stages in which Ilm al-Hadith and its fields went through, they can read the book Buhuth fi Tariq al-Sunnat al-Musharrafa written by Akram Diya al-Umari who is a doctor in Jamia Islamia in Medina. Um, this book that we are standing over, Manzumatul Bayquniya, is a book, Mufida, a very beneficial book, especially for the student of knowledge who is going to embark and who wants to have understanding of Ilmul Hadith and Mustalahat, the terminologies in which the scholars of hadith use, the terms that they use. This is an eye-opener. It allows a student of knowledge to have some form of understanding in this very important field. This book is written by the author, Al-Shaykh Tahir, Shaykh Taha Ibn Muhammad Ibn Futuh Al-Bayquni. Some other scholars, they argued that his name is not Taha ibn Muhammad, rather it is Umar ibn Muhammad. Um, Khairuddin Azirkali. Khairuddin Azirikli. Khairuddin Azirikli. Rahimahullah. In his book Al A'lam, he brought a doubt. He brought a shak whether the name of the author is Umar or Taha. He opens a suspicion on it. He doesn't say this one is this one. He says this or this one. So the dispute, dispute of the scholars is, is his name Taha or is it Umar? He's a muhaddithuyun usuli. Um, 
He was alive before the year 1080 Hijriya. 1080 Hijriya, which corresponds to the Gregorian calendar, 1669. He has a book, Fathul Qadir al Mughith, in which he wrote in the science of Hadith. And it's Makhtut. It is still not published. It is in uh, a manuscript and it's in Turkey. That book, Fathul Qadir al Mughith, that book is not published yet. It is in Turkey and it yet hasn't been published. That is a bit about who the author of this book is. This book has been explained by many scholars and has many shuruhat. It has many explanations that have been put. And this book, it gained shuhra wasi'a. It gained fame and popularity um, amongst the people of knowledge. And the students of knowledge, they gave it a consideration. They looked at it. The shuruh that exists of these, this book is, from them is Sharh Nukbatun Nabahaniya, written by Muhammad ibn Khalifa al Nabahani, who also has a sharah of Ajrumiya. Zurqani, Muhammad al Zurqani, he also has a sharah on it. He has a sharah. Now it's published with the Al Ajhuri, his Hamish and Hashia on it. The Zurqan is one. So it's it's called Hashia al Ujhuri ala Sharh al Zurqani. It's published. Atiya al Ujhuri. The year it was published is 1345 Hijriya in Egypt. It was published. Sahlul Musahal fi Sharh Manzuma al Baykuniya, written by a Shaykh Saif al Rahman Ahmed. Also, Taqrirat al Saniya fi Sharh Manzuma al Baykuniya. Written by a Shaykh Hassan Muhammad al Mashat. Also, Sharh al Ghamrawi, which is Makhtod in Jamiat Umul Qura. Sharh Abdullah al Siraj al Din. It is Matbu' in Halab. Zuhra al Samiya. Khalid al Jazar Khalid al Jazamati. Um, pub, uh, uh, written. But it's Makhtod. Also, Al Bahjatul Wadiya by Mahmoud and Nashaba. Al Urjoon Sharh Manzumat Al Baykuniya, written by Al Alama Sadiq Hassan Khan. Sadiq Hassan Khan's one, um, I've looked for it and I haven't found it. But uh, Al Alama Sahibu Tufatul Ahwadi, Sharh of uh, Sunan Al Tirmidhi, the Sharh of Sunan Al Tirmidhi. Who explained it? Sheikh Al Muhaddith Al Mubar Kafuri. He mentions it in his Muqaddima of his Tuhfat, uh, in his Muqaddima of Tirmidhi. And I advise students of knowledge to try to read the Muqaddima of Sunan Al Tirmidhi. Uh, sorry, the, the Muqaddima of Tuhfat Al Ahwadi. I advise the students of knowledge to read the introduction of Tuhfat Al Ahwadi. Rather, rather, Dar Al Maktaba. Um, um, Dar um, Dar al Minhaj Dar al Minhaj they published the Muqaddima the Muqaddima of Tuhfat al Ahwadi separately Dar al Minhaj they, they published it separately and it has a lot of benefits and a lot of fawaid full of it also at Timiyati Sharh al Badiri al Timiyati al Ajhuri mentioned it on his Hashia. Sharh al Hamawi Ajhuri mentions it. Sharh Muhammad ibn Uthman al Miraghni Khayr al Din al Zirikli. He mentions it in his Alam. And other than that, there are Shuruh. A lot of other Shuruh are the Shuruh written by or the, the explanations of tapes. Sheikh Tariq Iwadullahi, his sharah is, I can personally say, and Abil Hassan Al Ma'rabi, Ma'ribi, Abil Hassan Al Ma'ribi, and Tariq Iwadullahi, I think they have the best sharah on Baykuniya. Both of them have a, the best sharah on Al Baykuniya. Tariq Iwadullahi and Abil Hassan 
Al-Ma'ribi. Both of them, their sharah, their explanation is the best explanation on Al-Bayquniyah, according to my small knowledge. Naam. Inshallah ta'ala, um, before we start the book, we're going to take an introduction, which is Ahmiyatul Isnadi, the importance of chain of narration. Ikhwani and akhawati, my brothers and sisters who are listening, al isnadu khasis, it is a khasisiyah, fadilatu li hadhi al ummah. Chain of narration, it's a virtue which Allah tabarak wa ta'ala has given this ummah. It's a virtue in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has specifically given um, this ummah. Walidalik, this virtue or this uh, an, uh, unique thing for this ummah, no other nation shares it with us. وَلَيْسَتْ لِغَيْرِهَا مِنَ الْأُمَّمِ السَّابِقَةِ The previous nations, they don't have chain of narration. وَلِذَلِكَ Because of that, this ummah is referred to as what? Ummah al-Isnad. The ummah of chain. Because everything of us is what? Based on what? Chain. And Imam Sufyan al-Thawri, rahimahullah, as Ibn Hibban mentions in his book, Al-Majruhin, that he said, Sufyan al-Thawri said, Al-Isnadu Silahu Al-Mu'min That the chain is the weapon of the believer. فَإِذَا لَمْ يَكُنْ مَعَهُ سلاح, If the believer doesn't have his weapon, فَبِأَيِّ شَيْءٍ يُقَاتِلْ With what is he going to fight with? What does he want to fight with if he doesn't have a chain of narration? Or, I mean, sorry, if he doesn't have a sword, then what does he want to fight with? So the chain is like a sword, it's like a weapon. If you don't have a weapon, how do you plan to fight? Abdullah ibn Mubarak, he said, Al-Isnadu Dini. Uh, sorry, Al-Isnadu Indi Dinun. Ama Al-Isnadu Indi Min Dini. The chain, to me, is from the religion. Lawla Al-Isnad, if there wasn't no chain of narration, Laqala Man Shaa Ama Shaa. Everybody would have said whatever they wanted. Chain of narration, if it wasn't there, then everybody would claim whatever they want. So what distinguishes between the one who is making up things as he goes along and the one who isn't is what? It is the chain. That's what distinguishes between who's telling the truth or not. Muhammad ibn Sirin, he said, Muhammad ibn Sirin, the statement of Abdullah ibn Mubarak is narrated by Imam Muslim in his Muqaddimah. And I want you to all take this as a side benefit, which is any statements that are narrated by Imam Muslim in his Muqaddimah, they don't have to be authentic. You can find narrations which are in the Muqaddimah of Sahih Muslim, which are weak. Because the Muqaddimah is not of the conditions of Imam Muslim. The Muqaddimah is not from the conditions of who? Imam Muslim. Naam. So that's why you find him quoting the Salaf and the Sahabas and the Tabi'een. Also, um, Imam Al-Tirmidhi, he narrated in his Sunan, Kitab Al-Ilal, that Muhammad ibn Sirin said, كانوا في الزمن الأول لا يسألون عن الإسناد. The first generation, the generation of the Sahabas, they never used to ask each other, he said, chain of narration. They would never ask. كانوا لا يسألون كانوا في زمن الأول لا يسألون عن الإسناد. No one would say to another person, what is your chain? فلما وقعت الفتنة But when the trials and the tribulations took place, the Khawarij came out, the Qadriya came out, the Rafid and the Shia came out, who lie? The Jahmiya came out, the Mu'tazila came out, the Murji'a came out, the deviated sects came out. What did it make, what did it force the people of the Sunnah to do? It forced them to what? سألوا عن الإسناد. They start to ask about chain of narration. لكي يأخذوا حديث أهل السنة. So they can take the narration of the person of the Sunnah. ويدعوا حديث أهل البدع. And they can get and they can leave off the hadith of the people of innovation. They can leave off the hadith of the people of innovation. Because of those statements of Ab Sufyan al-Thawri, Abdullah ibn Mubarak, Muhammad ibn Sirin, what, what happened? The muhaddithun, the people of hadith, they gave what? عُنِيَ الْمُحَدِّثُونَ بِتَنْقِيحِ الْأَسَانِيدِ وَالْبَحْثِ فِيهَا The scholars of hadith, they started to give consideration and effort towards what? To 
cleaning the chain of narration from the filth and the dirt, purifying it, researching and taking time out because of the importance that that matter has for them or it has for the religion. And because that was the case that they had to research, it necessitated what? It necessitated that they sometimes had to travel. And these scholars of hadith, قَدْ بَذَلُوا الْجُهْدَ They put so much effort in what? في تَتَبُّعِ الْأَسَانِيدِ To follow up the chain of narration. They took time out and they, took, they put effort in. Extreme efforts. حَتَّى رَحَلُوا مِنْ أَجْلِهَا فِي الْبِلَادِ and because of that, they traveled the land and the earth. They went everywhere. Uh, they went to every corner, every place where they heard there was a narration. They went there. And Imam al Khatib al Baghdadi, Al Imam al Khatib al Baghdadi, he has a book called Sharaf Ashab al Hadith. Sharaf, Sharaf Ashab al Hadith, the honor of the people of Hadith. He speaks about the things that they did. He speaks about it there. And he mentions that they what? That they traveled the world. They went everywhere to check a hadith, to compare it with what they heard, to verify from those who they were told narrated this, they went and verified it for themselves. So I advise you all to go back to Sharafu Ashab al Hadith, written by Al Imam Khatib al Baghdadi. But here is a statement I'm going to read on all of you, inshallah ta'ala, which is the statement of Imam al-Nawawi. Imam al-Nawawi in his book Al-Irshad. In his book Al-Irshad. Imam al-Nawawi said, Ilmu al-Hadith ilmu sharifun The knowledge of hadith is an honorable knowledge. It's an honorable science. It is. Yunasibu makarim al-akhlaqi wa mahasin al-shiyam. It befits. It goes hand in hand with good etiquettes and good manners. If a person wants to gain good etiquettes and manners, that's what he's trying to say, the ilm al-hadith is a way to gain it. وَهُوَ مِنْ عُلُومِ الْآخِرَةِ لَا مِنْ عُلُومِ الدُّنْيَا And it is from the knowledge of the hereafter, not from the knowledge of this dunya. Ilm al-hadith is from the knowledge of the hereafter, not the knowledge of this dunya. وَمَنْ حُرِمَهُ Anyone who is prohibited from this field, فَقَدْ حُرِمَ خَيْرًا عَظِيمًا He is prohibited from a lot of good. وَمَنْ رُزِقَهُ And anyone Allah gives him it. فَقَدْ نَالَ فَضْلًا جَزِيلًا He has gained a high, great, noble virtue. He's gained it. وَرَحِمَ اللَّهُ مَنْ قَالَ And may Allah have mercy upon the person who said, the poet who said, may Allah have mercy on him. Uh, may Allah have mercy. This statement, or this poetry, um, Al-Imam Al-Khatib Al-Baghdadi transmitted it in his book, Sharaf Ashab Al-Hadith. He transmitted these lines of poetry in the 76th uh, page, in the 76th 6th page, that the poet said, Deenu Nabiyyi Muhammadin Akhbaru, the religion of the messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, is narrations, it is news, it's information. نِعْمَ الْمَطِيَّةُ لِلْفَتَى الْآثَارُ Great for an individual is what? To gain the athar, the texts, the chain of narration. That is the best riding beast a person can gain. That is the best means. لَا تَرْغَبَنَّ عَنِ الْحَدِيثِ وَأَهْلِ Don't aspire and do not want huh, anything other than hadith. فَالرَّأْيُ لَيْلٌ وَالْحَدِيثُ نَهَارُ Opinions, mere opinions that are not based on evidence are only what? It's night time, it's dark. وَالْحَدِيثُ نَهَارُ And hadith is daytime. وَلَرُبَّمَا غَلِطَ الْفَتَى سُوبَ لِلْهُدَى وَالْشَمْسُ بَازِغَةً لَهَا أَنْوَارُ Another one said, أَهْلُ الْحَدِيثِ هُمُ أَهْلِ النَّبِيِّ أَهْلُ الْحَدِيثِ The people of hadith are what? The people of hadith are the people of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. وَإِن لَمْ يَصْحَبُوا نَفْسَهُ أَنْفَاسَهُ صَحِبُوا If they never met, met, met the Prophet, the people of hadith are the people of the Prophet. 
even if they didn't meet him and they didn't see him, but what? Their souls, they met the Prophet's soul by going through his narrations. They lived with him through the books and the narrations. They may not have seen him. They may have not accompanied him in real life, but they have through the books and the hadith. They have lived with him. They studied him so much that they know what he did in every situation and every different uh, issues. So brothers and sisters, um, it is important to take and learn this field of ilm al-hadith. A lot of people, they try to busy, busy themselves with other things and they think they may not need it. But it's a field where the religion has been protected through it. Inshallah ta'ala, I'm going to start the book, Bi-idhnillahi al-kareem. And, um, <clears throat> and Imam al-Bayquni, rahimahullah, he said, أَبْدَأُ بِالْحَمْدِ مُصَلِّيًا عَلَى مُحَمَّدٍ خَيْرِ نَبِيٍ أُرْسِلًا وَذِي مِنْ أَقْسَامِ الْحَدِيثِ عِدَّةً وَكُلُّ وَاحِدٍ أَتَى وَحَدَّةً The author, rahimahullah ta'ala, he started his book with what? He started his book by praising Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. He said, أَبْدَأُ I begin ha, بِالْحَمْدِ by praising Allah مُصَلِّيًا عَلَى Whilst I am praising Allah, I'm also sending salutations on the Messenger. Ala Muhammadin on the Messenger. Khairi Nabiyin Ursila. He is what? The noble prophet, the finest ever sent. The finest prophet huh, ever sent. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Good. Wa vi min aqsamil hadith iddah. وَكُلُّ وَاحِدٍ أَتَى وَحَدَّ وَذِي And what follows is وَذِي مِنْ أَقْسَامِ الْحَدِيثِ عِدَّةٍ The author is saying And what follows are a number of what? Hadith عِدَّةٍ means what? Divided Categorized وَكُلُّ وَاحِدٍ And each and every one of them أَتَى It has come وَحَدَّهُ And its definition has come with it I mean, I have brought all the categories of ilm al-hadith and I have also defined it uh, for you. Now the author, he hasn't brought all the types, but he has brought a good portion, inshallah ta'ala, that allows a beginner, that allows a beginner to understand a good portion that he needs. And inshallah ta'ala, if he takes the book after that, Nukbatul Fikr, Fi Mustalah Ahl al-Athar, and then after that he takes Ikhtisar Ulum al-Hadith, and then after that he goes to Al-Fiyat Al-Iraqi or Al-Fiyat Al-Suyuti. He has a good understanding, inshaAllah Ta'ala. I mean, you don't expect or you shouldn't expect in the beginning book, the first book, to have everything in there, then it loses the meaning of it being a beginning or a beginner. Naam. So because the book is a beginner book, we should deal with it as a beginner book. Not to bring too, too much sophisticated things. Each term... We bring a definition and its example, inshallah ta'ala, and we move, it. We, we move to the next one. Definition, an example for it, and we move to the next. So the student of knowledge knows what sahih means, he knows what da'if means, he knows what sahih and uh, hasan means, he knows what mawquf means, he knows what marfu' means, the definition, and he also knows an example for it. Then later, he can go into how many types there are, and what types there are, and what not. So inshallah ta'ala, I want to go over it in a very... Uh, simplified manner. So, he tells us here in these two in these two lines of poetry. He tells us that first of all he said he's sending praise on the Pro Allah wa Taala. He's praising Allah Alhamd and Musalliyan, which is salutation on the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Naam. And then he also tells us Muhammad khairi nabiyin ursila. So Muhammad khairi nabiyin is the same thing. It's a badal. It's badal means that Muhammad is the Khairun Nabiyyin. He's exactly the same person. Ursila that was commissioned, that was sent. Alayhi salatu was salam. And now he, the second line he tells us that the hadith, they are divided. So they're not one thing. They're divided and there are types. Each one he tells us that he's going to bring it to us. And he's also going to bring to us the definition of it. What does hadith mean? What does hadith mean? Hadith means huwa ma warada anil nabiyyi. It is that which has been transmitted from the messenger. Min qawlin in terms of what? 
speech. Or fi'lin, or in terms of actions. Or takririn, or his consent. That which he consented to, alayhi salatu wasalam. Or sifatin, or a description. Description. The description is two types. Sifa khulqiyya and sifa khilqiyya. Sifa khulqiyya and sifa tu khilqiyya. Sifa khulqiyya means his etiquettes and his manners, alayhi salatu wasalam. The other one is the, the sifa, the other type of uh, sifa is what? How he looked and how Allah created him, the way he looked and his appearance. So the word wahaddah means definition. It means wahaddah is bitashdeed dali. It comes from the word had a ta'rif wa tawdih wal bayan. It is the define. So he starts the first one by saying, awaluha sahihu wa huwa matasal. إسناده ولم يشذ أو يعل يرويه عدل ضابط عن مثله معتمد في طبطه ونقله. The author starts by saying أولها أولها هي means what the first of the types of hadith. أولها that ha goes back to al hadith. The first type of hadith is what al sahih. Sahih means authentic. As Sahih means what? Authentic. And we're going to learn what it means when a hadith is authentic. What does it mean? Awaluha Sahih. Sahih is Wahua. It is. Wahua is what? Aya Sahih. The Sahih is Matasal. The Sahih is the narration that is connected. Matasal means it tasala means when the chain is connected. Ayyah. Isnaduhu. It's chain of narration. Matasala isnadu. Its chain of narration is connected. Good. Walam you shadda o you al. Walam you shadda. Shadda means what? And there is no shudud. Shudud is to contradict opposition. The, and we're going to speak about that in more, inshallah, details. So the first condition of Sahih is what? That it's connected. Awaluha, awaluha sahih wa huwa matasal. The chain is connected. Good. The chain. Isnadu is checked. Walam yushadda, and there is no contradiction. Narrators are not. Op uh, uh, there's no opposition, or there is not a narrator that has separated from the rest. There isn't. Oh, you al, or there is not a. Defect, which is hidden, hidden fault or a hidden defect. There isn't. Good. That is also what. So if you think about it, the author on the first line, on the third line, we're on, on the third line, the author has told us one thing that is sahih and two which are that shouldn't be present. Um, so he tells us. Sorry, rephrase that again. The author tells us something that we have to come with, which is. For it to be sahih, which was what? Matasal. Its chain has to be connected. Good. The second thing that he's told you tells you is that something that it should stay away, stay away from, which is what? Walam you shad that there's no opposition. Good. Or there isn't no hidden defect. So two are absent. Keep that two on, on somewhere. Keep it with you. And remember the one thing that should be present. Good. Yarwihi. It is narrated. Now we're looking at the people who are narrating it. The narrators who are narrated it, they also have to have two things. The first one is Adlun. He has to be a reliable one. The one who is being narrated from and the one who is narrating it and the one that's passing it, who is passing it on to from the beginning of the chain to the end of the chain, everyone has to be reliable. That's the fourth one. The fifth one is Babit. The memory has to be very strong. So we have five things now. If you've all been paying attention, you will realize that the author mentions three things that have to be present and two things that have to be absent in order for the hadith to be what? Authentic. What are the three things that have to be present? The three things that have to be present is the chain of narration is connected. One. Two. Number two. 
it is that the narrators are all reliable. That has to be present. Three is that every narrator has to have good memorization. The memory has to be very strong. When those three are present, okay, and these two are absent, and what are the two that are absent? There is no opposition of a other narration. It shouldn't contradict another narration. There isn't no contradiction to another narration. One, that's absent. Also, there isn't a hidden defect. There isn't a hidden defect. Those two absent and those three present, this hadith is then referred to as what? Sahih. This hadith is what? It is Sahih. Now that we've taken what Sahih means, now that we've taken or we've understood what Sahih means, we need an example, inshallah ta'ala. An example is, what is better to take an example from than the most authentic book after the book of Allah? Imam al-Bukhari's book. Because Bukhari's hadith in his Sahih, they meet these conditions. Imam al-Bukhari said, Haddathana Abdullah ibn Yusuf. Abdullah ibn Yusuf told us. That's his sheikh. Qala akhbarana malikun. Abdullah ibn Yusuf, the first person. So Bukhari is narrating it from Abdullah ibn Yusuf. That's the first person. Abdullah ibn Yusuf took it from who? Imam Malik. Imam Malik took it from who? Ibn Shihab al-Zuhri. Ibn Shihab al-Zuhri took it from who? He took it from Muhammad ibn Jubair. Muhammad ibn Jubair took it him from his father, Jubair ibn Mut'im. Jubair ibn Mut'im. So we have five individuals in that chain of narration. We have five narrators there. All of them are reliable. All of them, their memory is on point. So those two conditions of the narrators have been met. The chain of narration is connected. Abdullah ibn Yusuf narrated it. He heard it from Malik. Malik heard it from Muhammad ibn Shihab al-Zuhri. Muhammad ibn Shihab al-Zuhri heard it from Muhammad ibn Jubair ibn Mut'im. And Muhammad ibn Jubair ibn Mut'im heard it from his father Jubair ibn Mut'im. Who then heard the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Jubair ibn Mut'im heard it from the Messenger. That the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said. Or more like that the Prophet recited. He heard the Prophet recite Surah At-Tur, Surah At-Tur in Salatul Maghrib. So this chain from the Messenger to Imam al-Bukhari, every individual met one another. And each and every one in the chain of narration is reliable. Everyone is reliable. So the conditions, two of them have met, been met. The chain of narration is connected. Hayya, the chain of narration is all connected. Also, all of the narrators are reliable. The third thing was what? All of the narrators, their memorization is on point. Three have been found now. Now, the two other missing ones are what? Is there a hidden defect? No, there isn't. 